Hey guys, welcome back. This is Devin Adams, Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, Fortnite Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants, and I do these videos, well, this series for myself. Anyways, I'm studying for Fantasy 4, and I'm having this lab environment, and I'm just throwing everything in the kitchen sink to it. It's completely impromptu. Uh, I have my rubber duck here to talk to, to kind of throw ideas out against. And uh, in the last video, 40 duck here, uh, he was making unauthorized changes to the FortiGate. So we went ahead and sold the, set up an LDAP bind. So we made the FortiGate an LDAP client, LDAP server, right? And now we don't have to store accounts on the FortiGate for our admins, and we created the tier support. So FortiDuck is out of luck. I did not mean to rhyme that, but that was cool. Anyways, uh, this video is going to be simple, all right? And uh, <laughs> I should not upload these videos, Forty Duck. I'm going on like two days of studying. All right, so um, in this video, it's going to be simple. We're just going to review the logs on the FortiGate because you know what? I want to make sure if Forty Duck does something on the FortiGate, I can make like a paper trail. And uh, that is also a good reason why always to use admin accounts separately. Don't share accounts. It's that whole accountability level thing. So let's go into our let's go into our local PC here. All right. And I still don't know why I didn't change those settings, but that's okay. I was trying to lower the performance on these things. I must have to reboot it. Anyways, let's go to our FortiGate. And uh, yeah, let's go check out our logging. So I'm actually going to log in once as 40 duck. All right. So here he is, 40 duck. And he has... Um, he has rights to everything on the FortiGate except to make system changes to the box itself. So uh, what changes are we talking about? Those are going to be things like um, accounts and can account permissions directly on the FortiGate. Uh, you can see them here if you expand the settings. Also, guys, any FortiGuard or anything that has to do with, you know, um, the host name, all those things are now out of 40 Ducks power. So... Um, Anyway, so while he's messing around doing his thing as, as an admin here, uh, we want to make sure that there is logs being generated on what he's doing. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead now, and this is actually a, another trick that I learned. You can use a different browser, or you can just go into incognito mode, and you can either log in as your uh, uh, admin credentials twice, and be in two different places on the FortiGate at once. So this won't pass along the session key. Um, but here we're going to use it to log in as a different admin so we can take a look at the system settings. So here we go. Because normally it would kick you off the second you logged in. All right, so Devin, that's me. I'm a super admin because I'm super cool like that. All right, here we go. All right. And uh, let's just make sure that our FortiGate's logging. That's going to be our first step here. So what is it logging? How logging is handling? So we're going to go to Login Reports. And we actually have not done any logging yet with our traffic passing through the FortiGate. Okay, that's, that's something completely different here. We're going to go down to Log Settings. All right. As you can see here, we're using a hard drive, and that disk is available, so we are logging to the hard drive. This shows a graphical representation of everything that's been used, and it looks like we really haven't been doing much of anything. So I will not be looking at reports right now, so I'm going to turn that off. All right, and I do want a historical view on the 40 view. So if the 40 view um, is their graphical representation of the logs that are up here, it is amazing. This will give us those little those little baseline lines anyways um, it's just nice okay if you don't have a hard drive though it will say memory all right um, and on the 40 gates uh, that's not uncommon for your 40 gate not to have a hard drive now you do have some options here you can do remote logging and the Forti Cloud is free and that will give you seven days you have to set it up first on the dashboard all right or you can send it to an off server like 40 analyzer for the manager they do the same thing completely different story there but for the manager central management with 40 analyzer capabilities for the analyzer is a beefier log aggregator so and look at that the tried and true syslog server itself okay so um but we do have a hard drive 
and it looks like we're not even using it. So good times. So let's keep scrolling down here. Now, event logging is what I wanted to make sure was turned on. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like we are collecting logs. So that's good. These are all the event logs that you can check for. All right. Now the local traffic log has to do with traffic destined to the FortiGate itself. Usually not necessary unless we're troubleshooting. So, cause what we're gonna be looking for is probably in here anyways. All right. And then down here is where you can resolve host names and also resolve applications if you're using the internet service database. So um, that's a different story too, but it's kind of like getting some level of visibility for what applications are being used by doing a reverse lookup. So anyways, uh, all right. So 40 doc should be, should be, you know, should be recorded here. So if we go down to system events, oh, you're, it's right. There he is, 40 duck. Yeah, pretty cool, right guys? Look at this, someone changed, configuration has changed in the admin settings. See how that has a warning level? Let's pop open the details here. All right, so it does have a security level warning and that's because, well, there was a configuration change. There was something here that, um, required the, the running config to be committed. So that's a pretty big deal. All right. Um, looks like Bob logged in, Bob logged out. We have the 40 duck. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we are thankfully getting some kind of access, right? Some kind of um, accountability of what Forty duck is doing. And we really wanted to make like a paper trail and see what he's doing. We can right click and do a quick filter for 40 duck. And look at that, just adds in all of his activities since he's logged in itself. So, and if you do have different places like the memory or the disk or the 40 analyzer or the 40 cloud, just don't forget to click here too. And the filters are pretty self-explanatory, all right? Uh, if the filter isn't auto-completing or you don't see what you wanna see here, just make sure that you add the column, all right? So great, it looks like logs are are working now for traffic logs that are actually passing through the 40 gates um, best practices says that you shouldn't really have to log everything so um, let's actually take a look at that real quick so if we go to our policy and objects and we go to ip4 policy any forwarding logs will have to be defined on the firewall policy itself so let's drill down here all right so we have internet access, okay? We really haven't done any security profiles here. But as you notice here, log is turned on, but it's only for security events. So that's why we're not seeing any logs, okay? Now, if we do all sessions, it will log every single session that is brought up and terminated, okay? If you do log every session that starts, you're gonna get two logs. Guys, that should rarely be used in my humbled opinion. It's usually too much information, all right? Too many logs can be just as bad as too few of logs. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is um, we need to have a goal, obviously. Now, I have never used the, the capture packets before. I'm gonna have to look into that. Usually we do that on the network tab. Anyways, um, but let's just say that we had something here like, hey, you know what? We wanna see what websites our users are going to. Sure. That's, that's something that has to do with logs. So instead of turning on all sessions, what we can do is do the log filter. And there is a profile that just says monitor all. Now, the deep inspection is usually required and it is for things like application control. That's gonna have to be a way different video. It's gonna take way too long, all right? Um, but uh, the, the good thing is though, is that uh, we can just log where they're going to using the certificate inspection. Now certificate inspection is not deep inspection. It's just a double check of the certs and they can use this to make some kind of accountability of what websites people are going to. So should we try it out? Let's try it out. So we'll hit okay. And this way they won't get cert errors, but then again, we're not gonna get any deep inspection involved. All right, so um, let's try it out so let's go into our you know what I'm actually gonna make a new computer for this one all right so I am going to open up my devices because this way we can have it just running in the background now I really like this web term if you want a tiny Linux box that just has enough there to do um, 
what you call it, to do like web traffic. All right, so this is gonna be one of our other admins or something. So I'm gonna go over here to configure. I'm gonna turn on DHCP, because thankfully we have a DHCP server going on. All right, there we go. And of course my resolution's too low. All right, I'm just taking it off the screen real quick to hit save. All right, there we go. And then apply, then hit okay. And I personally like to change the icon because it makes my lab look cooler. So uh, this guy's gonna have like an old, uh, I don't know, like an old CRT machine or something. And we'll just call him uh, PC2 or something like that. All right, there we go. He's gonna generate some, some traffic for us. We'll plug him into our switch. We'll turn that bad boy on. And we'll see if we can't see what websites he's going to. All right, here we go. I love how fast these things post too. And I'm running all of this off of a laptop, guys. So um, I'm impressed what KVM can do. All right, so here we go. So let's go to uh, make internet noise.com. Hey, by the way, did you guys see how I just instantly got an IP address? What? Okay. Make some noise. We're making some noise. Are we getting cert errors? Are we getting cert errors? I'm not seeing any cert errors. No. And that's because it's using certificate based inspection to see where people are going. All right. Uh, we don't get any deep inspection, but at least it's, it's good enough for that. So I'm going to leave that running in the background. And in the meantime, let's go back to our FortiGate. Uh, let's see here. All right. And if we go to our uh, log files now, so let's go to log and report and let's go to our forwarding log traffic and we should now see yeah exactly forwarding logs and guys can we see where they're going to you better believe it yeah exactly and look at this see the little penguin yeah yeah so that's device identification happening and also right here is the reverse database that you can do for application names so uh, real quickly what that is I should just I should just reiterate that uh, the FortiGate does offer a uh, database a part of the FortiGuard services so if we go to policy and objects and if you go to internet service database this is a collection of the most popular uh, uh, public popular public IP addresses of applications and their transport protocol and their protocols and all their individual IP addresses so it's a huge database of like everything going out to Amazon or everything going out to Google it's it's actually quite amazing guys and that's always growing um, in fact because I just dropped the license not that long ago it probably is still updating itself and you can confirm that by going to system go to the FortiGuard services and you can check the version numbers here and it will take a while for everything to kind of come up to up to par here so um, and then you can force it obviously by hitting this button right here to update all the databases all right now the web filtering and everything like that that's actually done by a, a live query and that will be a different topic someday so um, but yeah eventually you know if you hover over it you can see when the last time they're updated and uh, it should probably take a while before everything is 100% up to date but it will so so there you go at least we got some logging going on and uh, yeah so um, and also by the way because we're just logging security events that's also why you weren't seeing a whole bunch of minutia in there also you weren't seeing like huge DNS requests you weren't seeing anything like you know um, ICMP traffic or whatever okay um, now, if you go to your web filtering, let's see here, there we go. This is where you can filter out that traffic just for its action, its category. See how the category is coming up on where they're going to? All right, and that's all part of the FortiGuard web license. And yes, the log view is, is nice. You can click it, you can hit details, you can drill down. I love the 40 view guys. If you go to 40 view, there is different graphical representations of these things. So for example, websites. Yeah, there you go. 
you can see the domains you can see the categories heck if we had if we had deep inspection turned on we could also see the search faces all right so I don't know why categories clunked out there see this is what our this is what our historical view can do we can also do it over time we can find out what normal looks like there's even bubbles there we go to graphically represent this stuff so it's pretty darn cool you can also save this to a widget if you wanted to create a dashboard you can also get this thing to auto update itself every so often so um, a lot of good stuff there guys so okay I'm gonna keep that short and uh, yeah me and rubber duck will try to <laughs> me and 40 duck will try to figure out something else to do but I just wanted to do a real quick review on on logging so just don't forget that you have to turn it on on the log settings for system events and also forwarding traffic logging is defined on the firewall policy and it's best practice to make a security event set to monitor all instead of monitoring all sessions being created because it's usually too much data so all right guys until next time